Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. I'm Grant Gamble, and I'm so excited to take all of you at home on a city tour of the most diverse coffee shops in Toronto, Canada. I got my good friend Brandon behind the lens, and all of you at home, let's waste no time and let's go. Okay, everyone, so we're here in Yorkville in downtown Toronto, and we're going to visit an institution in Toronto's specialty coffee scene, Pilot Coffee Roasters. So this is their location inside the Manulife Center. Let's go inside. So Emily, tell us who you are and where we are. So I'm Emily. I am Pilot Coffee Roasters Retail General Manager, and right now we are at our Manulife location, which is in Toronto's Yorkville neighborhood. So for the people at home who have never been to Pilot Coffee Roasters before, what should they get when they come here? Our cold brew on tap, our nitro infused cold brew is incredible, um, definitely a must try. But we also always have a lineup of uh, single origin espressos available that will change depending on the time uh, that you're visiting. And are there any like food items or pastries that are maybe like a do not miss? Yes, oh my gosh, the chocolate zucchini muffin is vegan, gluten free, but it's delicious. The food is a must try for sure. Well, thanks for chatting with us, Emily. Should we try some coffees then? Definitely. All right, okay, let's go. Let's... Okay, friends, so we're now in Queen West and I know that we're about to have one of the best meals of the day at Early Bird Coffee and Kitchen. Let's head on in. Who are you and what are we drinking right now? Uh, my name is Min Yi. Uh, I'm the general manager at Early Bird Wine and Coffee in Toronto. And now we are drinking Batch Beer Coffee, the Yabitokoba Ethiopia Coffee roasted by Transcend. Tell me a little bit about Early Bird. Early Bird uh, opened on Queen Street West in 2013 as one of the first multi roasted specialty coffee shop in Toronto. And uh, over the last seven years, we began to serve brunch and dinner and now uh, natural wines as well. <laughs> For the people at home who have never been here before, yeah. if they're coming to Early Bird, what should they get? First of all, it should be coffee, because uh, I like coffee. In terms of food, uh, we have a really nice brunch menu selection here too, but also I think breakfast bowl is really good, uh, because we put lots of herbs to just make the uh, polenta puris here. So I think this is a must to try for people. So now we're just up the street from the historic St. Lawrence Market and we're about to go into Neo Coffee Bar. So these folks are known for doing amazing pastries and amazing coffee in a Japanese fusion environment. Let's head inside. So we're here at Neo Coffee Bar at King and Frederick with uh, the man behind it all. So tell us who you are. Sure, uh, my name is Kengo and I'm a brand manager at the Neo Coffee Bar. So tell us a little bit about Neo Coffee Bar. How did it get started and what's the concept of sure. it? Sure, so we're here at the King and Frederick's location and we launched uh, almost uh, five years ago. Our concept is Japanese modern bakery and cafe. For the people at home who have never been here before, sure. um, what's so special about Neo? If you want to have a coffee, maybe people usually go with a latte. And also for something like Japanese, then I would just recommend uh, matcha. Our matcha is really good. We get from directly from Japan. So I have a pretty big sweet tooth, so I love cakes and sweets. So what about the pastries? We have a signature roll cake. Uh, it's actually Swiss roll cake. It's pretty um, common in Japan. We offer a lot of variety of roll cake and matcha, classic strawberry. So now we're in Koreatown and we're going to visit an absolute hidden gem called Russell and Still, which is a Vietnamese specialty coffee place. Let's head on in. So we're here in this beautiful space in a really cool part of town. But who are you? Hey, so we're Russell and Still. So we're kind of a Vietnamese inspired cafe that serve uh, coffee from Vietnam and also Vietnamese brunch and kind of Vietnamese mommy sandwiches. And I think one of the really unique things about you is that you're using Vietnamese Arabica, right? Which That's is a correct. whole other side yeah. of Vietnamese coffee. That's totally right. Um, so there's only around Less than 5% of our coffee production in Vietnam is Arabica. And we'll find that with this bean, it's so versatile that um, our whole coffee program concept is using only one beans, but for different brewing methods. So whether it is espresso based or cold brew or the Vietnamese iced coffee side or pour over as well. 
So maybe let's talk about uh, the design of the space because that's yeah. obviously a big part of the cafe, right? Our tagline is sip by chill and the whole concept is create a coffee and living experience. So with a cup of coffee, with um, you know, a, a good flight of barmy, what you need is like a, a space that you can relax and chill. Not so much in the pandemic anymore, but um, for us, it's, uh, uh, you know, a, a cafe is more than just like a coffee shop serving coffee. Um, it, it's kind of creating an experience that you enjoy a moment of drinking coffee, taking your time, chatting with your friends, um, enjoying good food, good company in a, in a chillaxing space. All right, everyone, so the sun is still shining and we're in Rosedale and we're about to go to Mineral, which is a beautiful restaurant that has specialty coffee. All right, so we're here with Bruce Lee, who's a bit of a legend in the Toronto coffee scene. But for those that don't know, tell us who you are. My name is uh, Bruce and I own and operate Mineral here. So tell us a little bit about Mineral. Like, what's the story of it and what do you guys typically focus on? So Mineral is actually a restaurant, so we focus on Canadian contemporary food that's uh, Filipino spirited. I'd say it takes a little bit from Singapore, China, Japan, South Korea. We have an extensive wine program, cocktail program, with the addition of specialty coffee. So that's our area of focuses. So thinking about the viewers at home who have never been here before, mm. um, what should they get when they come here? They should definitely come for dinner. We make the noodles in-house every day. We make it with a high-protein flour. So it's, uh, it just makes the noodles like a bit more pliable. It soaks up the sauce that we make in-house really, really well. I pair it with like a red wine, like a Sangiovese, and then to finish with uh, an espresso usually or a pour-over that we do like in-house. It's pretty fun. It's a good combination. I'd say it's a good night out, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're in Summerhill and we're about to visit a shop that has a very special place in my heart because I actually used to work there. We're about to go and visit Boxcar Social, which has one of the most ambitious and fine-tuned coffee programs in the city. Let's head on in. So we're here with Alex Castellani at Boxcar Social. Tell us a little bit about Boxcar Social. Yeah, Boxcar Social, we opened back, you know, started working on the project in 2013. We opened uh, our doors in Summerhill, the Summerhill neighborhood of, of Toronto in 2014. And the concept of Boxcar was really to marry a serious bar program with a serious coffee program. To, to have wine, beer, and whiskey um, that were given equal treatment to coffee. We, we really believed in that, uh, that we could contribute or at least aspire towards delivering that philosophy through sensory experiences, through menu building uh, and, and through execution. For the viewers at home, they've never been to Boxcar before, like mm -hmm. what, what should they come in here for? Mm -hmm. What should they expect? We are still, after seven years, and, and you know very well about this, putting a meticulous amount of work into keeping a menu that is fresh, that is very carefully selected so that the coffees are delicious, but also that is narrativized in some, some ways. And so for example, right now on our coffee menu, we have three coffees from a farm in Costa Rica called Volcan Azul that all have different processing. You know, we're going to have within the next month, three different coffees from Volcan Azul that are all anaerobically processed, but three different varieties. And we're continuing. <laughs> what I think Again, many of the people who knew Boxcar even seven years ago, uh, what we were trying to do back then. But now with a step closer as we sourced those coffees, we were in Costa Rica back in February. So now um, we're bringing our guests, hopefully through our own experience and through our own efforts in, in sourcing, that much closer. So it'd be safe to say when someone's coming here, come with an open mind. Come with an open mind. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what time of day. <laughs> And now we're in the eclectic Kensington Market, about to go and visit my partner's favorite cafe in the city, Fika. Let's head on in. So we're here in Kensington Market at Fika Cafe, and who are we sitting with? My name is Yadi, and I'm the owner of uh, Fika Cafe in uh, Kensington Market. I've been uh, running this place for five years. I love coffee, and um, I used to be a pastry chef, so uh, that's why I decided to do this. So tell us a little bit about Fika. Fika is the Swedish-inspired uh, uh, cafe. So uh, we pride ourselves uh, with uh, making pastries from scratch in-house. Uh, people come here for uh, our cinnamon buns, seasonal pastries such as semlas, 
and also our spice lattes, iced coffees uh, made with cardamom. Uh, we're known for that. So we're in Kensington Market, which is a bustling bohemian area of the city, but tell us a little bit about Kensington and how you fit into that area. I feel that we, we are very fortunate to be located in Kensington Market, which is a very diverse, historical, unique you know, place in the city, um, filled with many small independent businesses, attracting uh, locals and uh, many visitors from uh, around the world. So uh, I think it's a very special place. So we're now on Dundas West, about to go to our next stop on the tour. This is by far the smallest, but one of the coolest. So we're here on Dundas West at Milky's, but who are you? I'm Fraser. I'm the owner here at Milky's. We're a shop we set in Dundas nice. West. We're a small little pocket. We're about 330 square feet, and we serve coffee. So tell us a little bit about the story of Milky's. What are you guys about? So Milky's is a stand, so we kind of decided to take design and coffee and sort of fuse them together. Uh, we really wanted a space that was bright and playful and really fun. Uh, we even chose the name Milky's, you have to smile to say it. And then when you look around the space, of course, you see that there, there's no colors, everything's been unbranded here. It's just natural white and home. And it's really nice to sort of shift all of the design, the space into the focus of what we're making, which are our drinks. So for the viewers at home who have never been to Milky's, what should they get when they come here? Uh, okay, so we make seasonal drinks. Every season we come with three to five new drinks. We really try to focus on things that will suit the season. So comforting drinks in the autumn, which we're just getting into. I would say that if you're here in the summer, uh, one of our big hits this year was the Flash Brew Lemonade, which is kind of like the double refreshment of the two things we probably want the most on hot summer days. For us, we've made drinks that are visually very appealing. Uh, the space itself is a very satisfying space to be in. Uh, it's very loud and minimal at the same time. Uh, you see the very graphic patterns, but there's almost nothing in here. Um, and in the drinks as well, the, even from the cups we use, which are specially picked to, to make the drinks look the best that they can. So we think that's sort of where Milky's can stand out, is how, where we get those two parts together. Okay, so now we're between Chinatown and the Financial District, and we're about to go to the Library Specialty Coffee. So tell us a little bit about the library. So what are you all about here? The idea or the concept came out from uh, education. That's what we wanted to focus on. And that's also why we call it the library, because we want to make this place become a place people can come learn and share. So everyone's happy to come here to talk about coffee and ask as many as questions we want. For the people at home who have never been to the library, especially coffee, what should they get when they come here? As we uh, first open, we are probably want the only coffee shop has a separate pullover bar. I think it's probably one of the best way to taste the different coffee uh, or to compare with different coffee. How do you choose the beans that you're showcasing in the space? I wanted to make sure everyone's happy with the coffee, so our collection is like pretty wild actually, so we have um, not only like very specialty, for example, some like very high acidity, very fruity coffee, but also we always try to keep some coffee with like a low acidic and not very fruity flavor. It's a good way to educate people. There are so many possibilities from the coffee. All right, so now we're in Parkdale, one of my favorite neighborhoods in the city, and we're gonna go and visit our friends at Happy Coffee and Wine. Let's head on in. Hello, my name is uh, Ed. I'm one third of the owners of Happy Coffee and Wine. Tell us a little bit about Happy Coffee and Wine. We knew that we wanted to do coffee, we knew that we wanted to do wine, and we knew that we wanted to do food, and uh, we wanted it to be uh, a hospitality space. I really didn't want to open up a coffee shop that was kind of a bar, and I really didn't want to open up a bar that just had coffee. I yeah. really wanted to make a space that felt complete, that felt cohesive, and so, honestly, all of the design concepts and the ideas that we brought to Happy, we kept that in mind. So for people who have never been to Happy before, uh, what should they get when they come here? I guess it depends on if they want coffee or um, a drink. I think if you're having wine, don't ask me, definitely ask Madeline. <laughs> She's like a total whiz with words and obviously knows all of the wines really, really intimately. For coffee, I would get a batch brew. How do you fit within the Toronto coffee scene or stand out in this place? More and more I see it was important that we had something more than just coffee. I think for us, 
um, it made sense to utilize our space as much as possible and creating a space that operated throughout the day and into the evening just made a lot of sense. All right, friends, so now we are at our last venue on the entire tour. This is actually going to be the venue for the Toronto Coffee Festival, which will be taking place in October 2021. But we're gonna brew a coffee here. I find that a bigger brew ratio and a coarser grind just allows for those flavors to come through in the cup a little bit more. Mmm. It's pretty good, but I'm really excited to be drinking coffee with all of you at home here in this space hopefully a year from now. Cheers. Okay, everyone, so that's it for today. Brennan and I had an amazing day. My favorite part was just getting to go around and chat with everybody and see all these places that I hadn't seen in a long time, but so happy that I got to share my city with all the viewers at home. I'm Grant Gamble, and this is Toronto.